Okay, so here we go. We're uh, modifying a still 039 muffler. This works for the 029, the 031 as well. You're going to need a six point socket, works real good. Um, 5 16 wrench, 8 millimeter socket, a couple of drill bits, 3 16 7 30 seconds, files. Um, you need a uh, small screw, screwdriver, a pair of pliers or vice grips to pull down that screw. You're going to need this to remove that limiter tab and hopefully if you got one of these it'll really help. $110 it's still shop, but well worth it. Okay, so first of all, if you want this project to happen tonight and be done, you might want to stop off and get some studs from the still shop. They're six dollars a piece with the hardware or else treat them with some PB blaster a couple of days in advance, you know, two, three times, whack them with a, a hammer with a wrench, you know, put a wrench on it and tap it with a hammer a little bit, vibrate it. Okay, if you snap them off, snap them off. They're real easy to replace. They just slide in and out. We'll show you how that works. Take the sucker apart. Realize you're going to have to modify this baffle out here. So you got the baffle, the spark arrestor screen, and then the internal muffler. Your muffler looks like this one. It's got a couple of little tiny puny holes right here. That's the U.S. version of it. Okay, the European version has matching holes up here. A couple of little puny ones. Okay, well you can drill out a lot. You can go 80% of the exhaust port uh, in volume. So what I did with mine was I enlarged these ones quite a bit. Um, I actually went this way with an L shape. Uh, made these really, really big up here. And a person could drill in this area right here. This area in there is the internal silencer, um, internal baffle. It makes it really, really loud. Some guys do that, but uh, there's no reason to. Okay, so that's what my modified muffler looks like. Pretty sweet. Uh, a lot, a lot of horsepower added by that. Okay, here's the external baffle. Uh, you want to modify this so that you can keep your exhaust gases going up and out and over the top of the bar. Um, the first thing you want to do is there's a there's a spot here where this angle comes back and ends. It's pretty obvious. Just grind that part out. Just take your grinder or a drill or a file, whatever you got, and drill that sucker out. Oh, and it'll look like that. That was a fast mod. And then what I've done with mine is I've drilled a hole in the top of it that once you hello. Once you drill down through you you angle it so that the gas goes out this way. And then here at the front of it, we've done the same thing. And right here, these holes are drilled at an angle going up. Then I set the nut so that the the edge of the nuts helping to angle it up. So there you go with that. So the easiest way for me to put this back together is off the saw. Take this part, stick that on there, stick that on there. Bam, bam. Oh, I was going to show you this, so here you go. If uh, you happen to bust an exhaust stud, this is how hard it is to replace one. Um, they just slide right out of a little square slot in the side of the... So, snap them right off. Don't even worry about it. Okay. Make sure you got your gaskets back on there in the proper order, facing the right way. Hello. Um, so now, once you've modified your muffler, modified your baffle, um, you're going to have to go in and work on the carburetor. You can't run your mo exhaust modified saw without rejetting the carb or retuning the carb. It's just going to be pumping a lot more gas through it. So, more gas can come out of it, more gas needs to go into it. So, you open up your 
your high. You'll see that in a minute. Get your muffler back together. Make sure it's all nice and tight. Sometimes you want to put anti-seize on there if you want to get it apart again, but like I say, the studs are six bucks, so. Um, okay, so we go inside the saw here, and we, I used to have a, a small screwdriver, and we open this up, and maybe, just maybe, we can see the limiter tabs in there, they're little orange guys. Those little orange guys right there. Okay, go in there and turn that slot until it lines up with that little slot in the carburetor. Screw a small screw into the hole. Grab that screw with a pair of pliers. Of course, you want to remove your air cleaner and pull it out. There'll be a little tiny, just a little tiny tab on that thing. You trim it off with your razor knife. And then you put it back in. And then you're going to set your low at one quarter turn out, your high at one and a quarter turns out. Start the saw and turn your idle screw until the chain is rolling, about 3300 RPM. Now you're going to adjust the, uh, the low screw up and down until you get a maximum RPM at that idle setting. And then back the idle screw back out until the chain's just barely rolling. Redo the low screw up or down until you reach your maximum RPM at that idle setting. And then back your idle off until the chain's not rolling anymore. Okay, now go to your high screw and while it's running, hold that sucker at wide open throttle. What I've done with mine is I've trimmed, gone in there and filed this stop off because that stop actually is not letting the butterfly open 100%. So I filed that stop off. That opens 100%. Now we're running wide open throttle and we're going to we're going to lean or we're going to richen it out until we hear a burble, which means screw it out. It's going to go wee. You're going to screw it out. It's going to go wee. And then you're going to turn it back in just like a minute on the clock, like a minute, just a tad bit lean. Then run it in your cut. If the chain wants to stop in the cut, you're too lean. Okay, that's a lean condition. Now, if you're bogging down in the cut and just losing, you know, all your RPMs, then you've got a rich condition. So tune it for the cut. This one runs best at 13,250 RPMs. I've modified the intake, drilled some holes in it, um, double dogs, chain roller, chip deflector.